Hi, my name's Nathan Zampronio, and I'm one of your Hawkesbury City Liberal Councillors. Welcome to episode two. If you've received your rates notice recently from Hawkesbury City Council and immediately had a heart attack, then you're right to be angry because you're being taken for a ride. Hawkesbury ratepayers have been hit this year with a perfect storm that has caused the rates of over 5,500 homes to rise sharply. It's been caused by several factors. The value of General, a statutory New South Wales body charged with periodically assessing everybody's land value, has declared a lot of properties close to the northwest growth sector as worth double or triple what they were worth only three years ago. And land value is the major factor in the formula that council uses to calculate your rates. Worse, the independent green Labor bloc controlling Hawkesbury Council have chosen the worst possible moment to change that formula to actually sharpen the impact of land value on your rates, and that's causing pain. To understand how, you need some history. Prior to 2013, the formula was based 100% on land value, something which has been called the ad valorem component. In 2013, the then Liberal Controlled Council set what was called a base rate of 50%. It's a standard charge applying to everybody with the aim of evening out the imbalances between properties. The impact of land value on your rates was mitigated by half. This was a sensible move that understood that many families on acreage lots are asset rich but cash poor and they shouldn't have to pay three times as much as a resident of Bly Park if the value that they get from council services is only comparable or less. This year, the new council eroded that base rate from 50% to 30%, increasing the impact of land value. Your Liberal councillors, including myself, voted against this move. These factors come together in complex ways, and there's no denying that the most significant part of the increase comes from the value of general. But I believe that our council is rubbing salt in the wound by changing the formula when they knew how wildly land value changes would skew the figures. And it's worth pointing out that if your rates have risen, council is not taking in any more money. The amount of rates that council raises only increases year on year by what's called rate pegging. It's a percentage that barely matches the inflation rate. I'll have more to say about rate pegging in the next episode. But this is what offends. The size of the pie is the same, but some residents are being asked to contribute a bigger slice. In some cases, a much bigger slice. Here's a chart showing all of the homes in the Hawkesbury, about 24,000 properties divided between suburbs where residential rates went up on average, shown in red, compared to suburbs where rates went down in green. As you can see, the ratio is about three to one. These red suburbs include Oakville, Vineyard, Moralia, Pitt Town, Cateye, Windsor Downs, Yarramundi, Grossvale, Kermond, and Ebenezer, among others. Next, under last year's rating structure, here's the proportion of rates paid by the same suburbs. Even though the red suburbs comprise 23% of residences, they're paying 29% of the rates. Now, here's a caveat. These rates are the residential rates only, not businesses, and only the main component. There are other fees and charges I haven't factored in here that also appear on your rates bill, including rubbish collection, sewerage, sullage, stormwater and so forth, and your mileage will vary. Finally, look at how that mix changes under this year's formula. This year, 23% of residential ratepayers are paying 35% of the rates. Aussies have a very finely attuned sense of a fair go, and when you consider that people on acreage properties arguably get less out of council than people on urban blocks, things like curb and guttering, street lighting, hot bitumen sealed roads rather than dirt or spray sealed roads, and proximity to things like pools, parks and libraries, it becomes apparent that this is just not fair. And as a Liberal councillor, 
representing you and living in the area that's most affected, I am disappointed at this outcome. I have a confession. I like working with spreadsheets because sometimes it's easier than dealing with people. This analysis of the figures is something that I've had to do myself to get my head around what it is that's happened. I asked council staff for the raw figures, effectively a dump of our entire rating database, which was a, a spreadsheet with 24,000 rows in it. And then I asked myself, what would this look like on a map? So I slurped the data into Google Earth Pro. This is the Hawkesbury. And each coloured dot represents a property. And where are all the homes whose rates have doubled or worse than doubled? There they are, the angry red and purple dots, down here in the southeastern corner, centred on Oakville. The blue dots are people whose rates have gone up by under 50%, and the green dots are the ones whose rates have gone down. The detailed maps can be downloaded at my website, councillorzampronio.info, and I'd encourage you to subscribe for updates while you're there. I've done this geospatial analysis myself. This isn't a council visualisation, but it paints a telling picture of the inequity now being foisted on many Hawkesbury ratepayers. About 5% of people are paying more, a lot more, two or three times as much as they were paying a year ago, so that 75% of people get a very modest cut. Now, cutting taxes is nice, but there is an essential principle of fairness here that's missing. If you were dividing up a restaurant bill like that, when you'd all eaten the same amount, you'd tell your friends collecting that money for the group that they were rotting you blind. Ultimately, the reason that land values have risen in Oakville, Vineyard and Moralia is because of the encroaching development on the other side of Boundary Road in the Hills Shire. Oakville residents have no prospect of subdividing their land in the same way, and most would not want to. This aura effect from development in a neighbouring council area represents a distortion in the market. And in my opinion, the Valuer General has erred in his recent determination and should reconsider. Meanwhile, Hawkesbury Council should do its part to ensure that the worst of these changes are mitigated and that to the extent that it can, it ensures the rating system is fair, balanced and reflective of the value that properties get from council and its services. I and my Liberal colleagues will continue to fight for that. Hi again. I'm doing these video pieces in an effort to try something new and innovative in the way that your local council engages with you. I hope that you think that this kind of thing should be supported, and if you do, here's something that you can do. The first thing that you can do is subscribe. You can subscribe to this as a YouTube channel. You can subscribe to it as a video or audio podcast and have episodes automatically delivered to the device of your choice, such as your smartphone. You can subscribe to my Councillor Zampronio Facebook page. You can subscribe to the Hawkesbury Liberal Team Facebook page. Or you can subscribe for email updates. The links to do this are either below if you're on the YouTube page or here at the Councillor Zampronio website at councillorzampronio.info. And the second thing you can do is share this, comment, sink the boot in, tell a friend, give a damn. This is your Hawkesbury. Thanks for watching.